the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Jesus, open my eyes. You are the fountain of life and it is in your light that we see light. Except you reveal to us, O oh God, we cannot know. Except you show us, we cannot see. Except you guide us, we will not be accurate. Hallelujah. I'll share some more on Monday, but this word you see is the secret that make men great. Every man is built by the word of God. Not just the word of God that is read, but the word of God that is revealed by the wisdom of the spirit and received. And tonight, I, I just want to talk along these lines and we'll just run through a few scriptures as I challenge you. I, I truly hope that someone will be angry with your current situation, whether spiritually or whatever dimension, and trust that tonight's teaching will help build you. Let's start with John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 32. John chapter 8 and verse 32. In fact, let's start from verse 30. We'll read from 30 to 32. 30 to 32. It says, as he spoke these words, this is Jesus now. Many believed on him, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He said, if you do what? Continue in my word. Then ye are my disciples indeed. And then 32 says, and ye shall know the truth. You will know the truth by starting as you continue. Somewhere along the lines of your consistency, you will encounter something. Remember the context is continuation. Not just starting to read. Not just a five minutes devotional. Not just a one month study. He says, if you continue in my word, you are activating something that will cause you to eventually encounter the truth. He says, and if it is truth, there is a character of truth. It sets free. Meaning that if you claim to know the word and it still leaves you in bondage or in that situation, then the truth of that word the final the uh, how, how do i how do i describe it now when the word of god is broken down the unit of it is truth the capacity to be set free from life's vicissitudes the capacity to not be under the limitations of life to rise by understanding and by the liberating power of truth he says if you continue meaning it will take a while he didn't lie to you he said if ye continue then you are my disciples then he says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free ladies and gentlemen there are many people around the world with scriptures with books with tapes with teachings attending seminars and all of them will tell you they have the word. All of them will tell you they have the truth. But we do not see that liberating power of the truth in their lives. 
not their spiritual lives not their finances not their ministries they remain in bondage in spite of their supposed encounter with the word something is wrong if it is truth that you meet the bible says the truth shall make you make you like i say make food for me the food is not there you are going to enter a kitchen and make it happen the bible says the truth if encountered can make what does not exist in your life it it never said the truth will bring you freedom there is no freedom anywhere like like if i tell you make jollof rice for me as at the time i was speaking there's no jollof rice you will search it and not find it but i said make it are we together your intelligence can gather from any market and any location the cow the vegetables and then combine them in a way that after a few hours there you have plate what you are looking for is freedom but it's not available and then the bible says when you encounter the truth the truth knows what forces to bring together and then all of a sudden something that did not exist will now exist the truth shall make you free free from what free from poverty free from fear free from mediocrity are we together now so the problem usually is that we may have encountered the word but we have not encountered the truth let's talk about it in john chapter 18 please give us verse 33 and we're reading to verse 38 something happened between pilate and jesus please listen and learn the bible says pilate entered into the judgment hall again jesus is being judged now and called jesus and said unto him art thou the king of the jews pilate was asking a question next verse we are reading to 38 jesus answered him sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it of thee that means pilate had an information people were murmuring it outside and he came in he said are you a king looking like this the king of the jews and then the next verse pilate answered am i a jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me what hast thou done 36 jesus answered listen my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence 37 he said pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king remember this is a battle of reality and information he's trying to verify something follow me closely thou sayest that i am a king to this end was i born for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto what? Talk to me, please. That I should be a testifier of the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So he's talking of truth now. Next verse. Pilate said unto him a question that people never ask. What is truth? notice the moment Pilate said what is truth Jesus said I am a testament of the truth immediately he said I find in him no fault in other words because you are the truth you qualify to be free if it is truth it always sets men free are you getting what I'm saying now so Jesus Pilate confessed that because you are a testifier of the truth there is no reason why you should be in this situation when truth shows up no matter what it is it must let you go jesus's remaining there was because of his love for us but pilate said before all he said i find no fault in the truth that's the same way poverty can say i find no fault the truth has come i must give way this has come i must give way when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i said my goodness everywhere Jesus went that was a system of oppression it couldn't hold him for long because he was truth are we together they held him before a cliff he came out there was scarcity around the truth and the truth said no it shouldn't be and all of a sudden multiplication came because the truth was there are you getting what I'm saying now listen very carefully 
everywhere the truth went the ministry of that truth was to liberate was to set free when he got into your house no matter what it was that truth made men free he went to the house of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to your house. And within minutes, because Zacchaeus hosted the truth, he was free. And thou shalt know the truth. If you ever host the truth, then the truth must make you free. Hmm. Very powerful revelation. That means if we remain in bondage, the issue is not just Satan. The issue is that we may have been receiving scripture and Bible study, but the truth has not come. Because when the truth comes, the Bible says it makes you free. It fabricates freedom from wherever and ministers it to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Many people keep bragging around with their acquisition of scriptures and their criming of scriptures and their participating in teachings. Listen carefully. The truth is not just a right information there are many right informations that are not the truth you have to understand this you only say an information is correct based on a reference unfortunately the reference itself can be wrong are we together now there is something that science science has pieced together a body of facts and whoever aligns with that body of fact with respect to science is walking in the version of the truth. Is that true? But science itself must be vetted by someone higher than it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Culturally speaking, there, are, there is a system of understanding and behavior built by culture. And to the degree to which you align with it, we say you are walking in the truth. So there is a lot of relativity when it has to do with the subject of truth. What is permissible to a person and within a context may not be permissible to another person within another context. But here's what Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, not a truth the truth that means i am the ultimate system of freedom and liberation an encounter with the truth makes men free if you claim to have knowledge of the word of god if you claim to have found something you think is true and it does not produce the requisite freedom then it is not the truth it may be something else. It may be a well-meaning information that is correct based on a historical system of agreement. They have agreed that whoever does it this way. I give you an instance. In our world today, if a woman just looks at herself and says, I want to get pregnant without a man, that is not true as far as the educated opinion of men is concerned. Is that true? But when the truth was ready to find expression, there was a system that was created that would have been told a lie by science. Be careful what you call true and false. There must be a reference because with respect to God, there are some things that are agreed as true by men. But then when it comes to God, God says, no way. Lazarus died. That was the truth. Based on what doctors like David and his colleagues would say, they had checked him and there was no pulse. It was over. But when the truth came, he said, what did you say? Three days, roll away the stone. This is the truth. If it is the truth, he sets men free. Are we together? They buried the truth and covered it in a grave. After three days, the grave opened and the truth came out. If it is truth, then it must set free. The question is, why are we still helplessly under so much bondage? We pray, we fast, 
we sleep on our Bibles, we quote Bibles, we listen to tapes, yet it looks like our situation is not even scared of our spiritual investments. Could it be that we are not encountering the truth? Even before Pilate, the, proof, the truth prevailed. The moment Jesus said, look, leave the issue of king. I am truth. Pilate said, what is truth? And he said, this man is free. I may not understand what truth is, but I'm a victim of the effect of that truth. I must let you go. I must let you go. What if you knew the truth about your life and destiny? What if you knew the truth that you were not a victim of situations and circumstances? What if what they told you about your upbringing was a lie? It was culturally true, but from the reference of God is a lie. What if your past and what it told you were a lie with respect to God? A lie is not a wrong information. A lie is any information that was not brought from God. It's a lie. It doesn't matter how right it is. If it did not originate from God, then it's not true. Ah. Truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. 2 Timothy, when you read from verse 3 and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible talks about this group of people, zealous people like we are. It says that they are ever learning. Please look up. Ever learning, but never able. Learning does not guarantee an encounter with truth. That you are sitting with a Bible does not mean you are encountering truth. That you are sitting with a tape did you hear the testimony of the dear lady who was listening to the seven days um, prayer and fasting? She said she had been listening to it. Just because you started the tape, started and finished with your ear hearing it does not mean you can counter the truth. She said at that point, a prayer came and light opened. And all of a sudden she received. And the results showed immediately. A friend that had no business helping her, that's the truth making a way now. The truth always makes a way. Don't leave no uncle nonsense. You don't need. Once the truth comes, the truth will find a way around it. Because the truth is not just an information. The truth is also a person. So when the truth comes into the womb of a barren woman, what happens? The truth starts making a way. It finds out what is the issue first. And they say, ah, this woman has no womb. And the truth said, there is still a way. There is still a way. Prophesy to yourself and say, there is still a way. Look at the challenges that stand before you. That you cannot see a way does not mean there is no way. Just stop looking for a way. Let truth come. Truth knows where the way is. Ah! You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you made. Sit down, let me tell you. There is no uncle anywhere who is going to help you. There is no... A, an uncle only helps when the truth makes him part of the actors of your breakthrough. Nobody just comes because he knows you. Ye shall know the truth. Many of us are trying to find ways and methods. Whereas the secret is to stay until the truth comes. When the truth comes, light must come. Let me show you something. Let me show you something that will bless you. What's, what's, the, what's the scripture now? Help me, Holy Spirit. Um, Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Give us from verse 11 and 12. Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12. Let me show you that just because you have a book called the Bible in your hand does not mean you have access to truth. Read it with me. He said, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. It did one that is what? Learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Not because I can't open it. It is 
sealed sealed next verse <laughs> and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I am not learned both the educated and the uneducated stand helpless in the presence of this book where is the key how do men read it I thought by being learned I will automatically understand it it is not science the book is sealed there is a spirit with the key that opens it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your praise listen listen book you see has written in it the codes of your destiny but it is always sealed i told you everything glorious is what covered no glorious thing is revealed you don't buy a product without a package so your destiny is there but it is sealed going to school is very important but when it comes to the matters of the spirit my brother my sister don't let the pride of education make a fool of your destiny that's why we have many intellectuals who brag and say what is god a can become c and they are trying to make c out of a forever whereas the maker is truth a foolish man can come with his foolishness and sincerity and say lord i, I can't amount to much my life you see is a testament of this they are life to those who find them. When you find it, it looks like a charm. It's impossible for life to keep you down. This is not some bragging. No, if it is the truth, if you ever see a mountain start laughing, there must be a way. There must be a way. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, if you are a witness of the truth, then I find no fault. I'll let you go. Are you learning something tonight? It's not just opening the Bible and then reading, oh, James chapter this, the Bible said this, in the name of Jesus, I will never be. That's, that's just, that's, that's scripture. You are just playing games. Many of us keep flattering ourselves for many years, thinking, I'm not saying reading your Bible is not important. I have found the missing key why many well-meaning believers don't get results. They are not lazy. They are more serious than even some of us pastors. Take laziness out of the equation. Why is life hard for many people? What is the mystery of this hardship? Close heavens everywhere. No help, failure, pain. There is a, an explanation. The book that you have been reading is sealed. That you got a message from me to preach does not mean it has been open to you. No, sir. Have you ever opened a scripture and then you are reading, you've been reading it and all of a sudden you see something there that you never saw and then you can mark that day and say something shifted. That, that portion of scripture was open to you. I remember studying about the anointing for many years. I read books and books. A lot of people got their revelation from Good Morning Holy Spirit. You've never had me mention it because i didn't get anything from it i read it good morning holy spirit i was blessed but i didn't see anything there and i just stayed if you continue that's the key and then one day the portals when it opens it is open when jesus stood for to read in the temple the bible says they brought to him the scroll of isaiah it was open and he said this day you have been reading it and thinking it's some prophet somewhere but i am the manifestation of this brothers and sisters let me tell you this if we don't get serious with our lives to find truth we are going to keep convincing ourselves and jumping around quoting scriptures that for a very long time our lives will not capture the levels of freedom that befits one who claims to have that knowledge of truth i 
I know many wonderful, lovely men and women of God struggling around in ministry, sincere. They won't steal nothing, they won't do anything. Notice that both the learned and the unlearned are still victims of the same thing. So what is the key? I will show you. <laughs> ah, I will show you. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 to 5. Note this. You know, there are many people who keep talking word of God, word of God, word of God. I, I don't have a problem with it. It is true. But we are missing something very vital. Vital. The book by itself is sealed. You will only read a, you will read stories from it. For this cause, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Uh-huh. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. What is the grace? How that what? Uh-huh. He made. Stop. He made. I didn't learn it. How that by revelation? He made. Who is the he? Someone came to me and opened the book. He made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. Whereby when ye read, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge. The basis of what you are reading is not just that I wrote. Someone came and opened something to me. And I want to help you too. Because if all you do is to just read, you will not find anything. It says, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which others, which in other ages was not made known. So this thing is made known. It's not studied. Is made known. It's like occult. It is made known. If it has not been made known, my brother, my sister, let me tell you, you will fast and pray and never find it. It is made known. A man can receive nothing except it is given. This is how we rest in the kingdom. We keep struggling and thinking it's just by all of these things. No. Your press and then he comes to make it known. If God does not make it known, you will never find it. It is so obvious, yet you will look and look and never find it. It says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by who is the he? Talk to me, who is the he? So the he comes to you and says, this book cannot open except I am there. The book can give you the word, but the spirit can show you the truth. You need truth. That's what you need. You don't just need word like word like that. When you say this, many believers think you are encouraging people to not be serious about the word of God. Let me tell you in all honesty, I doubt I I doubt if I've seen any man that is more passionate about the word of God than me. There may be, but I've not seen one. But I found out that your life is going to be a chronicle of frustrations if you don't understand how truth comes out of the word. It says, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. Jeremiah 33, please, and verse 3. Help us, media. Jeremiah chapter 33. Please read with me. Koinonia is projected inside and outside. One to go. Uh-huh. Stop. I will what? I will what? I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Doesn't matter how long you've been studying it. He said you don't know it. That's why the results are not speaking. But when you call on to me, I will answer. And the answer is that I will come and I will show you. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. We have ignored the Holy Spirit and carried Bibles all around. 
hoping that just by reading it intellectually we'll be able to put a and b together and the bible tells us that the mysteries in this book are sealed that's why they are called mysteries when you read the bible outside of the ministry of the holy spirit all you will see is potentials for possibilities you will keep seeing them but your life will never never experience them one of the greatest secrets in my life is the ability to allow the holy spirit to open up scripture open up scripture open up scripture john chapter 16 please we'll begin our reading from verse 12. john chapter 16 we'll begin our reading from verse 12. read with me please one to read i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now why because you are natural and these things are spiritually discerned are we together verse 13 how be it when he the what the spirit of truth not just the holy ghost the spirit of truth is come what will he do please talk to me he will guide you through the book he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you and you've seen it all through scripture people are shown things people are shown things if you are not shown anything you will continue bragging around with scripture and never have results your assignment is not just to sit down and read your bible religiously your assignment is among other things to cry for the manifestation of the spirit of truth all scripture was inspired by him he knows the codes that are enshrined in this book but it is sealed it will take hunger to cry for him but brothers and sisters when he comes and opens it to you you and all others will stand in awe of your destiny this is the mystery behind great men this is the mystery behind great destinies a spirit came to them and showed them things whether it is in the occult or in the faith life nobody rises without being shown things he must show you and i was taken in the spirit ezekiel and i was shown this what have you been shown or what have you been reading you have been reading in the name of jesus i will never be poor you have been reading he owns the cattle on a thousand hills you have been quoting it you have been doing everything but you are just reading potentials it is sealed when the spirit comes he will not quote the scripture he will show you the quote in the scripture when the holy spirit comes he will not tell you no 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 he will show you something that may not make sense for another person there's something god showed me about the anointing there's something god showed me about growth there's something God showed me about victory. There's something God showed me on how to deal with enemies. Whatever is not shown you becomes the gate to your destruction. You have to find out what you have not seen and cry with all your heart and say, Lord, show me. Let me tell you how you know you have not sh shown. You, whenever you do what is supposed to be the obvious solution, and it does not work then it means there is more there is more apostle I, I pay my tithe apostle i give apostle i'm a sincere man of god i study my bible all doors are closed there is something that has not been shown you let me use the example of our dear pastor did you think that all the people that rose up for him just came to asaba in the last two months were they always there so what happened why was the climate harsh over him look how well meaning he is i've been to his meeting once an adorable man of god and his wife it's amazing how life 
does not give the excuse for you being sincere it doesn't say you are sincere and then no sincerity is not the seed for greatness you can be as sincere as possible and find out that you are a victim of everything bad you know pastors come to me and they say apostle i can stand before god and tell you i love god with all my heart i say i'm a man of god if you're lying i will tell you and then they now say apostle but why is life treating me this way like i told you was it last week or the week before last i begin to nod my head in pain because i know that um the solution is not just to pray there is something that they don't know and my brother my sister until this book is open to you and your eyes see your destiny will remain small we are all gathered today now scattered across inside and outside and those following online because god showed a man something your generation is dependent on what you see they are they are waiting earnestly to say man of god what has god shown you that you can bring to the table if all you are taking to destiny is your degree get set for a big shock if all you are taking is just your sincere heart get set for another shock if all you are taking is your uncles that you know my uncle somewhere my auntie somewhere no i don't study the bible to crime scriptures or to preach i search for light i search for truth there are very few people who ever know how i study the bible because if i teach you it will frustrate you i can stay on a scripture for a long time because there is something i'm searching god can show me like a code i can see half of the truth and see the other part two years later and until i see it i will wait but when that code comes pack 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 the seals are open and the results follow no devil stops it when when the seal is broken and open then your life will be a wonder even to you <laughs> favor is here but is sealed there is a mystery to it the anointing there is a mystery the helpers of your destiny are here the problem is not the book the problem is that it is sealed when you are not aware that the book is sealed then you are in trouble because you will continue to read how many churches have continued to read this every sunday sunday after sunday but there is no one to come to testify that this is what god has done please hear me i want you to learn some of you to take years to understand what i'm sharing with you as simple as it sounds your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real. I testify. Your favor is real. Your power is real. I testify. Your power is real. When the Lord gave me the revelation on the body of Christ, let me tell you this. I didn't read it in any book. I remember lying down like a child when the Lord came with this scripture for this cause. The Lord began to teach me that there are four encounters. The son, the spirit, the word, and the body. And that the reason why many people never rise in life is because they've had the three encounters, but not the body. I said, so there is something called an encounter with the body. And my life changed. Every true apostle of the Lord must deliver a mystery to a generation. There must be something God gives you by the spirit. This is not just Bible study. It is that he comes to you. He doesn't come to me every time. But he comes. I remember when God was delivering to me the secret of church growth. I read. I study. I've studied Young Gicho's materials. Studied Bishop Oyedepo's materials. But here he comes. The code for your own destiny. Given to you. That someone else will do and will not work for him. Because it was open for you. That's why you see people doing things that should not work, but it works. Hmm. 
I'm doing my best to try to explain this thing to you. Sometimes it's very difficult to understand, to explain spiritual things. All you see is the result that follows. But behind those results are strange encounters that walk together and they make a way. They make a way. Brothers and sisters, look at me. I love you. That's why I'm teaching this. I can come and just talk to you and we laugh and joke. I am so passionate about your results. And the way many of us are going about it, you will never find it that way. I'm telling you this. I'm saving your life from frustration so that you will not jump like others have done for many years. And then one day you'll find out they are not even in the faith. And they say, don't bring any Jesus talk. I've tried him. It doesn't work. You only tried scripture. When you try the truth, sit back and watch it make a way. Strange ways in the wilderness. Ways that should not be there. The truth will cut a way out of a rock. The truth will cut a way out of a river. And you will cross and they will look back and not be able to find the way again. And they'll say, hey, Jimmy, what way did you follow? And you say, I don't know. The truth just made a way. The Egyptians tried to trace the way that the truth made for the Israelites. They couldn't find it. They drowned. The song of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and the rider has been thrown. The same way somebody passes is the same way that kills another person because it has to be a way made by the truth for you. Someone can do a business that lifts him and you do a business the one that kills you because it's sealed. It was not open for you. Someone can use the same word you are speaking to get favor. You will use it and get destruction because you are just speaking. Light of the world You step down into darkness Open my hands Let me see Light of the world You step down into darkness Open my eyes Let me see Sing it one more time you're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Listen. When you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are in a position where you will remain in darkness forever. Jesus himself told us why he sent us the spirit of truth. Not just to pray gibberish in tongues. No. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us men of God. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us pastors. The Holy Ghost was sent as the opener of the sealed book to guide you into all truth. The book is there, but it must be opened by the wisdom and the intelligence of one who is not human. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. First Corinthians chapter 2. Please give it to us. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Read with me, please. Everyone is projected. Just read and then you write it down. One, two, read. Uh huh. Not the spirit of the world. Stop. In any case, you must receive a spirit. So there is the spirit of the world that inspires men and opens codes for men based on the laws of life. And they can manipulate it and get some results. And God is saying, so that when you are inspired, you don't think it's the same thing that inspired someone somewhere. There are two spirits. There is the spirit of the world. A man tells you he was just sitting down. And he made a discovery. It's a lie. Nobody makes a discovery. A spirit comes to you and opens up a portal of a reality. And then you quickly scrabble it and walk around it. And the whole world marvels. 
and they call you albert einstein and they call you michael faraday and they call you the right brothers the bible is saying there is no such thing as just a human invention by yourself it's not true a spirit must come to you and open up what is sealed but the spirit which is of god why that we may know the things that are freely given to us of god there are things that are freely given so says the book but the spirit of god the spirit of truth comes and opens you so that you will now comprehend and then you walk in the reality the light of it and my brother my sister your life will suddenly change in a way and manner your family members will look at you and say what charm what did you touch look at this come promise if by next week promise suddenly enters a dimension of the anointing a dimension of revelation and let's assume five jeeps come from different people around the world and is parked in front of his house nobody will say promise so you are this hard working someone will call and say promise come where did you go to who did you meet we know that the arm of flesh cannot produce that result who assisted you just tell me and he'll say well it's a long story are you ready to do what i say i'm ready now it's okay meet me by 11 30. let's go to one corner somewhere so everyone knows you would be you would be unwise to see what god is doing through my life and this ministry and believe it's just hard work no no what more do you need to see to convince you no man can do these things except a spirit be with him with god all things are possible without him on your own there are things that are not possible many of us have been fighting alone do listen to what i'm telling you and you will watch your life change in a way that will surprise you i kept thinking about this and i said lord look at what you've done with my life all because i saw the holy ghost and i said holy spirit i am weak i am dull in myself i'm not condemning myself is the truth i am ignorant i may not even have the strength but if for any reason you can hold my hand i am available just that one decision turned my life around I shared with you about my dream and vision you will get it in different messages i can't remember when i preached exactly that i saw a whole generation of people crying and they were saying there was no food no water and i wanted to go and rescue them but i was weak in myself but then i was determined to go out the moment i stepped out there was a giant mighty man he just held my hands and said let's go And if our God is for us, then help me. Stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Sing one more time. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can Prophesy to yourself. For the last time now. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Brothers and sisters, catch what I teach you and watch your enemies criticize you and waste their time. There is nothing that can be done about a man who the Holy Ghost has held his hand. Nothing. It's too late once the holy ghost holds your hand and says let's go you will climb mountains and walk through valleys when the door settles you are still standing and you will say to you be all the glory and men will say how are you doing it it's not by charms it's not by brain work this is not a plus b no
you see that I treasure the Holy Spirit so much to a point that many people just say, oh, this, this, this spirit thing is too much. Just focus on the word. You keep doing it that way and see whether your destiny will be open. I believe in the word, but the word is useless until the spirit breathes upon it. He is the one who gives life to the word. The first, the first person of the Godhead revealed was him, not the word. The word came after he was revealed. In the beginning, look at the order. God created the heavens and the earth. We didn't have an opportunity to see how that happened. In verse 2, there was darkness. Then the first of the Godhead. If he was the first in the creation of earth, he must be the first in your life too. He's showing you how to come out of chaos. Many of us just stand religiously. Acts chapter this, John chapter this, and we keep jumping around. And the Holy Spirit says, no, it is sealed. That's why an unbeliever will carry the Bible and all he will see is a compendium of controversies. You will see things that don't add up in scripture. God saying this one and God saying another thing and saying, uh -uh, God says doesn't lie. See how many lies he made because you are reading what is sealed. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will open your eyes. Others are looking, but you are seeing all of a sudden. You will see something others are not seeing. And then you will walk in a dimension they are not working in. I cry to God and say, Lord, this man is a weak man. You have to help me. And the Lord said he will help me. And all of a sudden, my life changed. I'm introducing to you not just a book, you have it. I'm introducing to you not just tongues, you can pray in tongues. I'm introducing to you not just God in you, you have him in you. I'm introducing to you what Yongicho will call Holy Spirit, my senior partner. If anyone ever tells you what is the secret behind Apostle's life, if you say prayer, you are lying. If you say Bible study, you are lying. If you say worship, you are lying. If you say sacrifice, you are lying. All of those are secrets. The greatest secret is that a weak man holds a strong God who makes that weak man a strong man that's what God can do that's what God can do the treasure that is in earthen vessel but held by a superior power that no force no cause no witch no devil can stop he told Joshua no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life brothers and sisters don't you see it? you have been trying in the flesh you have been doing oh I, I think if I if I buy one golf now and I do this and I understand this and that investment I will rise and the Holy Ghost just stands back and watches the ignorance and you, I, I know let me just get one golf I will be getting 10 10 thousand every week I'm a smart businessman then if I get another job in the bank as you are calculating it I'm not saying those things are useless but here he stands the gentle spirit watching your ignorance and your pride punish you how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the way Power at work in you, changing everything in the weakness to Christ. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life?
to me that's the secret no matter how dull you think you are no matter what village let them laugh at you while you walk many people laughed at me years ago for holding his hands they laughed and today they bury their head in shame for holding my hand the holy ghost is not the president of a nation the holy ghost is not the ceo of a bank the one who turned chaos in genesis 1 verse 2 to light holds your hand and someone laughs at you what pride when he held my hands i knew nothing about the anointing when he held my hands i knew i had no zero wisdom you were better than me when he held my hands i wasn't as smart as you but i was stupid enough to hold him and say no matter what it is i hold your hands i hold your hands he will hold your hand as you go to the nations people will talk and say let's watch what will become of him and swallow their words after many years because there is a hand there is a grace he is the creative power behind this ministry the wisdom you see is not the wisdom of a man you will read books and read books and read books and be tired and never find it because it is a is sealed are we together sealed all of the things i do today about the anointing he taught me how could i have known how old am i aren't you seeing that what what is happening is more ancient ancient this is not the wisdom of a man Kadosh. Kadosh. you are mighty on for me to celebrate things like birthdays what what are you celebrating who are you really celebrating take him out of my life and the secret of a foolish man outside of him is revealed but when he stands with you thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph listen I say it again there is nothing you can do with a man that the Holy Ghost has held his hands. No, sir. No, sir. It's a grand formula for victory. When he came upon Jesus, he turned Jesus to Christos, the Christ. Jesus was just a carpenter's son. Just anyone on the street. But when the Holy Ghost came, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, when he comes to your business, he will change it in a way that will surprise you the spirit of truth when it comes to your ministry listen let me tell you this I never listen I never stop getting amazed at the formula people invent in hope that will work out whether for ministry or whatever I teach you principles here 
But principles will never replace presence. Principles only become useful when presence is intact. God is not science. Listen, oh brilliant people. I may not be as smart as you. And I beg your pardon. But if it has to do with victory in this life, someone must hold your hands. And someone must show you. The physical principle of fatherhood should teach us that you never rise alone. Someone must hold your hands and lift you. We have ignored the Holy Spirit because of the embarrassment that follows walking with him. Oh, I tell you, there is big embarrassment walking with him because your way will not be the regular way of people. Because your life will not be within the context of others. But if you can be foolish to still stay and say, Holy Spirit, where will I go to? Jesus said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the key. I have watched people mock God I have they have not mocked God by mocking God directly they have mocked God by mocking his wisdom ah. there are people looking for anointing reading books getting all kinds of formula do a plus B add C to it then the power of God will move let me tell you this I say this by the authority of the kingdom you are wasting your time God is not a herbalist. It's only a herbalist you can receive charm from without a relationship. But when it comes to God, He will not show you power first. He will reveal Himself. Moses wanted to see His glory. He said, no, 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 Moses. I am that I am. Let's, let's discuss first. Every promise God made to me, I have watched it come to pass. As at the time He said it, I never knew how it will happen. But God, when he speaks, be foolish enough to believe that Lord you are able. God is able to do strings just what he said he will do. He's got a force. not the Holy Ghost you are holding. Koinonia, hear me. I keep introducing him to you. Hold his hands and watch what he will make out of your life. Leave all the, the unwise people who keep mocking God. Just do A and B. C must happen. Who are you to make C happen? How old are you to make C happen? A plus B does not guarantee C in this life. The person to make C happen can die. But when God holds your hand, Anything plus anything can become anything. Doesn't make sense. Look at this. The dear pastor comes and all of a sudden a hand is laid on him. It's not a hand that is laid on him. It's more than a hand, my brother. If it's just laying on of hands, you go and do it. A hand is laid. He carries that possibility. Enters a land that was not favoring him. And all of a sudden, things start changing. I am a blessing to you and to the world today. Simply because of his ability to help me. Ebenezer is my testimony. 
I am a man who has been helped by God. Helped in every way by God. Ah, he said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, with the enemies that fool the world, with the enemies of the gospel, where do you stand when God does not hold your hand? The results that we now celebrate, glory be to God, but they are products of Him. Listen, if you think good preaching is what is going to give you influence forever, save Johnny. I wish you the best of luck. Go and search the Bible and search history and find people like Alexander Dewey who communicated mysteries that at the end of their lives they were almost committing suicide because even if knowledge abound they will cease knowledge will cease all of these things will cease but when you want to become indestructible in this life hold his hands and do what he tells you to do and walk with him don't command him and say holy spirit my boy go and bring me money that's what many of you are doing holy spirit my boy go and bring me my wife go and bring me my husband Go and bring me members. Go and bring me prosperity. And he says, when I came to you, was I a tenant or the landlord? The word of God. The Holy Ghost was given to us, among other things, to unseal this. For many years, I read my Bible. Did you know, for many years, there were times that I would not even read my Bible for a while. I would just carry the devotional, repent and read it. Do you know why many of you open the Bible and it wearies you? You are looking at it, but you are reading something that is sealed. That's why you cannot get life from it. You will open today, you don't know what to read. No, not when he's guiding you. Tonight, we are going to pray. We are going to take serious time we are going to pray and embrace afresh his ministry in your life his person in your life he is the secret whether you are a businessman whether you are a husband you are a wife you are a man of God you are a woman of God the starting point of your victory is hinged on your passion and your love for him listen let me tell you this before we begin to pray. Listen to me carefully. When I was writing the things that I now do, that the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, at a point in time, I just sat down and I said, Holy Spirit, you must be joking. Is this it? This foolish? I think I'm smart. The thing with God is, the spirit of God is very gentle. The moment you begin to interrupt his wisdom with your I too know mentality, he just steps back. You do it your way. Go ahead and do it your way. Some things in our lives are not just an attack. It's us alone without him. Whether Satan was existing or not is the same trouble you would have. That is the natural consequence of ignoring him. I love him so much. Koinonia is built on intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who has given the word of God value. Look at what the messages are doing around the world. Do you think that is just because the message is so powerful? No. If he holds your hand, he holds your finances. He holds whatever comes from you. Someone called me the other day and said they were inside a taxi, a cab. And the cabman, every time he picks you, he, he, his own gift to you is that he will play one koinonia message. I don't know the cabman. And he just continued like that. There are people who have met angels who gave them koinonia messages. Not human beings. They entered meetings and gave them messages. I, I was I'm true to, to God. I don't share all these testimonies. I was told of someone who bought a memory card. New memory card. New brand new memory card slotted it in his phone and all he saw was koinonia message new memory card with seal seal he opened it i'm not lying to you a pastor from gambia 
a great a great man of god from gambia we spoke yesterday he said he was so depressed and he got to a point where he was washing plates in his house and he didn't know what to do and all of a sudden he said he, he just went on youtube and how he got across one teaching and as soon as he got that one teaching his life changed he said by next sunday the church changed and exploded he saw the manifestations of the spirit the word seeds were coming and he said who is this he introduced it to his wife the wife listened to the same message he did the wife didn't know the message he had listened to but she went to search on her own and listened to the same message you had the pastor that came last week from abuja just arriving here someone calls him to buy 300 shares it's not the work of a man no sir our parents are struggling now and suffering because they have embraced every other thing except him our our world is dying because we have ignored him don't join them don't join them to ignore him already your past the family background you came from is already a disadvantage on his own the only advantage in your life is him when you find him he will forget about your enemies forget about critics i'm telling you don't waste your time just leave all those things stay with him let him hold your hand my brother my sister and watch what he will do with your church and watch what he will do with your business and watch what he will do you may be crying while you are holding him i guarantee you the cry of pain will soon become the cry of joy you just hold his hands worship him hold his hands as you sing don't carry skill and a nice voice alone we live in a wicked world if all you carry is a nice voice you will not last one year human beings will suck you like an orange and throw you and look for the next happening thing but you remain fresh when you hold him impossible to be ignored impossible to be ignored he's gonna fulfill every My God is able. He truly is able. Listen. Look at me. In Nigeria today, an average young man cannot get established without some kind of bribe or some kind of things. To have to corner and lie and do something. You want to walk in integrity and righteousness the environment is already hostile against you the fact that you name the name of christ alone is trouble for you they will hate you at your workplace hate you everywhere what then is your advantage your advantage is not just the miracles that he brings the advantage is him if you can hold his hands and say holy spirit i am weak i confess my ignorance i don't know so much i know that if i try to be established my way the church will never grow the influence will never grow but i submit to you you are the fountain of wisdom you are the spirit of truth open up to me and then the holy ghost will say all right you step back and then he will show you a b c and your life changes you will stand as shocked as those looking at you and just nod your head and say God what are you doing I hardly share my testimonies I had to minimize it because of wisdom and so that it can encourage people to rise there are things brothers and sisters if I tell you some of you will not sleep I myself the recipient of that testimony sometimes i wake up in the night and just sit on my bed and say lord what is this what is this Halagbara, you are the mighty god hey.
That song had been in my spirit for throughout last week. I don't know how to sing. You're going to sing that song. After it, we are going to take our time and pray. Help us, please. Jesus asking for anything we are going to take our time and pray in the spirit one of the mysteries that we were given to accessing the mind of God is praying in the spirit I'd like you to take out time and just blast in tongues and pray seriously in the spirit lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere inside outside those online follow us as we pray Hey, 
foolishness I come in with my limitations and I come to you you are the only one who can make meaning out of my life I come to you lift your voice and pray and cry cry for his presence in your life get tired of things not working in your life and cry for his wisdom cry for Cry for his wisdom. Cry for his wisdom. Lord, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I'm tired of making I'm tired of making I ask for your will. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Then the secret was revealed. Daniel did not find it. Then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. I don't know what area in your life you need to see the hand of God desperately. I like you to open your mouth and say, Lord, show me. There has to be a secret. Open up this scripture. Hey, open up this scripture. You are the custodian of the wisdom of God. You are the custodian of truth. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me the secret to the anointing. Show me to the secret to increase. The secret to ever increasing fire. The secret to spiritual power. The secret to influence. The secret to activating my destiny. Show me, O God. The book is sealed. Open my eyes. 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 What must I do to prosper? What must I do to rise? 
What is the key in the spirit? What is the key in the spirit? Listen, look up. When Jesus, watch this. When Jesus was transfigured, he showed us the secret to his transfiguration by the appearance of two men. The law and the prophet. Not just the law of Old Testament. That if you want to be transfigured, the principles of the kingdom and the ministry of the prophetic standing side by side like Moses and the prophet becomes your key to rising. When Jesus was transfigured, we saw two men. Elijah did not appear. Enoch did not appear because they were not responsible. They were not the spiritual mysteries. The Bible says that Moses, Moses stood on one side and Elijah, I meant to say, sorry. Ezekiel and other prophets did not appear. Elijah was standing representing the prophetic. Moses was representing the law. And he said the book that contains those laws, don't let it depart. He's showing you how to succeed. Jesus did not just rise like that. The law, not just the law of the Old Testament, the precepts of God. You can have all the principles, but there is no prophetic voice and you remain there. No glory. You can do something that should prosper because there is obedience to principles but there is no voice it's like ingredients if you have rice you don't need as much tomato as you need rice but don't put the tomato and see you can't say you have jollof rice because of that small tomato including salt sometimes you you need one mutu of rice and then a few spoons of salt but you refuse to put that salt and see how it will mess up the whole food something you may be missing because your eyes have not been opened you've done everything but the last key to just strike it and open it that's what i keep doing all the time that's what i keep doing all the time when i speak over your life i'm not repeating myself when i speak over your life i'm standing to fulfill all righteousness in the spirit by the wisdom of the spirit I've taught you that Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years as the word of God until a prophet came to his life and spoke and baptized him immersed him and his heavens were open if Jesus operated and opened heavens for 30 years till he met John the Baptist in the spirit and power of Elijah your destiny will close almost forever until there is a voice listen listen i want you to get to a point in your life where you no longer fight spiritual realities the earlier you learn this the better for you do it before you start having children do it before it gets too bad because darkness for sure is covering the earth and cross darkness the people But upon you the glory of God will continue to arise it's not just because you are a man of God we trade secrets in this kingdom to stand and one of it is the Holy Spirit holding you but not just holding you opening to you the mysteries of the kingdom continue to read your Bible but don't think you will find it just by reading you will get to a point where he will give you the eyes to see they are life to those who find them. That means he's missing no until he opens it to you. I found certain things in my life. It was Bishop Oyedeko that shared with us that he found the key to kingdom prosperity. And he spinned round and shouted, Yay, I can never be poor. I'm sure people laughed at him. But you found it. If you found it, you found it.
I want you to succeed. I want you to excel. I'm showing you the precepts of the kingdom. Listen, take luck out of it. Don't call what you don't understand luck. That's arrogance. There is a very serious dynamic working that you are not aware does not mean nothing is being engaged. You will see what will begin to happen to your life shortly. When men say, why is it happening like this? Don't lie that you don't know what you did. Yes, it is, it is the Lord's doing. That's why it is marvelous. A man's doing cannot be marvelous in your eyes. A man's doing is natural. That's why I don't clap for you for walking. Because it's a man's doing. Men walk naturally, born again or not. But there are results that when we see, we know that this one is the finger of God. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do this except God be with him. It's a message I want you to carry to everyone you love. Jesus said, come on to me. Are you seeing now? Come on. He, 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 does not wisdom cry? Come on to me. Why will you continue to suffer and struggle? Listen, I'm bringing us to a point where we fulfill Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not. He's giving you a word of caution. Oh wise man, lean not on your own understanding. He says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He said, be not wise in your own understanding, verse 7. He said, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It is because we are wise in our own understanding. If God does not lead me, I don't have where to go. I don't trust what I can do. I will mislead people with my ignorance. But when he comes, you can dare the unbearable. You can stand and look at Goliath and say, Goliath, you come against me with your bows and your spheres but I come against you in the name of the Lord God the captain of the host of heaven whom you have defied and Goliath don't mind him while he's talking am I a dog that you are coming with a sling say just keep watching it's the same way God can give you an instruction by the Holy Ghost you've been dancing all the time but the Holy Ghost will wake you by two and say just dance to 230 it's not the ordinary dance you just finished dancing. That dance will give you twins. That dance will give you an estate. And if people ask you, how did you get it? You say, I dance. They say, please don't turn us into idiots. How did you get it? I know you did all those church things. I said, well, should I lie? I'm telling you how I did it. The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. I want to release my faith with you in one minute. I want you to be sensitive to from today till Sunday. But I want you to ask the Lord for three major things that you want to see done in your life. Things that don't ask for small things, carnal things. Ask for something that is destiny shifting. Ask for something that, that is able, you know, Elisha had no business Gehazi had no business ha having his eyes open. But when he was close to Elisha the prophet, he said, I'm not seeing what you are seeing. And he said, okay, let me make your eyes see. He didn't say just, mm, take advantage of my spiritual climate and see what I'm seeing. A man came in the midst of Samuel where a prophet was. And all of a sudden the hand of God was upon him. He prophesied naked from morning till night. Not because he had been praying and fasting. People have prophetic implications. Everybody walks with the spiritual climate that they carry. I want you to be humble enough to pray and ask God. Some of you is your family. You are crying for an intervention that must step in. I'm going to give you the next. Let's use the next five minutes. I truly am going to be interceding for you. I'm not praying for myself. I just want you to pray and agree. Lift your voice and pray. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. Go ahead and pray.
hallelujah listen you are going to pray but many of you i am you're not you're not it's not the zest of prayer let me tell you something they met the disciples of jesus and say why don't these guys fast we are fasting and these guys are eating yet they are getting the results we are not getting and jesus said for as long as the bridegroom is there so there is something the presence of the bridegroom can do there is an advantage you can take the bridegroom is the one who the marriage feast is for are we together now the covenant of the marriage is with the bridegroom but because you are supporting through a covenant of alignment he's saying there are some things that you may not need to do when the bridegroom is not there in other words i'm not ignoring that principle it is what you should have done except for the fact that another presence was introduced that can immune you from it i needed to share that scripture just to help you there are some things that ordinarily that's the way you are supposed to do but god brings men to your life that you can take advantage of and expedite your journey ordinarily the disciples were to fast jesus said i'm not fighting fasting they will fast one day but for now as long as i am here uh -uh. there are people that when you are around i know people that just because you are around them you may never read any book on finances i'm telling you sincerely except you just want to add to your knowledge the least the their their greatest state is still higher than your greatest dream their presence if you meet prince charles and prince harry and say i just got you a book on five levels of wealth he will congratulate you for being that courageous to enter the buckingham palace and say walk out of this place do you know why because as long as they are in the palace if they are out of the palace they will do a lot of reading but as long as they are in the palace i teach you mysteries always find out what advantage you have based on who you are connected to not just god alone there are some things you are doing that if you have knowledge you should not be doing you should have others may be doing it if i'm a pastor in living faith today I, there are some things i should not do if i'm a pastor in mfm today and i have problem with my prayer life i think something is wrong there is a grace i should drink from freely if i'm not a pastor in that place i may need to dissipate some energy but when god calls men he calls men with certain possibilities and when you come within that covering that thing should work for you i keep drumming this thing but many people don't get it it's true it's true find out those who are genuinely connected to this anointing there are things they before they even learned the principle the result was already speaking it's true as long as the bridegroom is there you are immune when the bridegroom leaves so you can learn the principle so that you are not just dependent helplessly on the bridegroom but you can take advantage of the presence of the bridegroom you can carry a handkerchief from Benny Hinn and put in your pocket and enter a meeting and be surprised yourself at what is happening simply because you made contact do you not see that God will be wicked to allow you pray for everything no I don't pray for everything in my life there are things that you can get jacob and esau those two guys they were not praying for the blessing they were connected to a lineage that had it the father didn't say okay you guys he said just go and make me venison let me release something on you look at this esau did not receive the blessing yet see the prosperity that came the fact that he came out physically that's why ishmael today Will the residue of that prophecy must always follow him there are things that should happen in your life my brother my sister there are some things that God has done for you already walking trying to save yourself from sin by your strength is unnecessary it was done by those who the bridegroom did not come for so they use the blood of bulls but now christ has come and that sacrifice that you just receive that's the same way there are other things that has been done he gave gifts to men 
to ease their journey there are things in life are you ready to pray our time is gone i want you to open your mouth and pray pray unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come the Bible says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet he shall receive a prophet's reward he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man he shall receive a righteous man's reward The Bible says, May the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Send thee help from Zion. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. Pray believing. Pray believing. Who are down mountain before Zerubbabel? Who are down mountain before this man of God? Who are down mountain before this woman of God? Who are down mountain before this family? Who are down mountain before this business? Who are down mountain? Hallelujah. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But he said, but I have prayed for you. If he could pray for himself on that issue, Jesus would not need to pray. God doesn't need to do for you what you can do for yourself. Are we together? He said, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you. What was the content of the prayer? That thy faith fail not. He said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. How do you strengthen them? By teaching them that there are some things you cannot do for yourself. And when you find what you cannot do for yourself, find the grace that can make it happen for you. Peter, I see you in a situation now. I see that your capacity cannot go far enough to give you that miracle. So I came in for you. 
in this similitude advocate this mystery when you see people trying things and it's not working tell them stop 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 in this kingdom is all right to be helped find a grace peter satan desired to sift you like wheat and as far as your level is concerned satan would have he already had a headway but i came in kabbalah kutia and prayed for you that your faith fail not he said when you are strengthened brothers and sisters let me tell you one of the most uncomfortable things for believers to learn especially because of the teachings that we've had um of course the bible says you can do all things i believe the bible says that because of the provisions that god has put in the kingdom are we together now yes when i say i will serve you jollof rice it's not just because i can cook it's because there is a way of getting it available the most important thing is that you have it so when the bible says all things are possible it's because of the possibilities he invested within the kingdom are we together one of it one of the mysteries that make all things possible is the ability to tap from higher graces you are getting there one day but if god is to allow you get there before you get the result satan will eat you up before you get there are we together so jesus as a baby could not pray for himself so god put a grace in hannah the prophetess to continue interceding until he would grow in wisdom as a baby he was killable so god had to put men to agree when he became strong he started standing for others when the disciples were weak in themselves jesus stood for them when they became strong they stood for others too that's how it works in the kingdom believe all the possibilities of the bible but be sincere enough to know what possibilities are available at your level of grace and then you are able to find the grace and the anointing that can supplement otherwise you will stand in pride believing all things are possible and it may not work for you father in the name of jesus i pray for your people as inspired by you i have i've asked them to pray lord you hear me when i call in the name that is above all names surprise them in the name that is above all names i declare from today till monday that god has made my birthday in the name that is above all names help them please i'm declaring that all those who are connected to this ministry all those who are connected to this vision and connected to this anointing enter a level of strange wonders strange wonders strange wonders listen hallelujah you see i'm sharing with you many mysteries tonight hold on i'm praying for you bad days are times when unusual requests are granted read your bible there were certain requests that only happen at bad days when a king was celebrating his birthday a girl danced before him ordinarily the king would not remove the head of a prophet but on a birthday season something happened when jesus was about to be born star that would not shine that much unusually came to the sky because a child was about to be born listen this kingdom is governed by mysteries bad days are not just the days when men are born bad days are signified by things in the spirit those who study scientology know those who study all of these things know except that man is not relevant to the program of god the same way covenants are enacted 25th december let everybody die in this family by 24th someone starts getting sick because 25th is coming are you seeing and 25th a father dies next year 20th the spirit that is responsible for activating that covenant comes around again and someone starts falling sick so it is 
birthdays are not just a celebration of the day a man was born. A whole prophet had his head removed by a small girl. Could the king have granted her that request ordinarily? What would she be doing in the presence of a king? But because it was the king's birthday. If you understand what I'm teaching you, I'm saying this so that those hearing, especially online, will not say, is this man idolizing this? You know, sometimes I'm even a bit scared to share some of these things because I, I, I want to make sure that I am understood so that people don't say, I'm making you maybe worship a man or something. No, I fear God. But this is how this kingdom works. So I pray again that between now and Monday the 25th, in the name that is above all names by the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the power that backs up this ministry the grace that has helped me in the name of Jesus may my God bring strange signs and wonders to your life strange signs and wonders in your finances strange signs and wonders in your life I speak to you that the things that were difficult for you before in a way that will surprise you you will enter a dimension of ease in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that this prophetic word be signified by the angels of the Lord and let there be a strange performance testimonies after testimonies hallelujah you watch the testimonies that will be shared on Monday service here and it will look as if it's a charm. Someone will tell you, I believe this prayer and I went, look what God has done in my life. Look how God has changed me. Look how God has opened doors. I even pray for your loved ones that are not here. In the name of Jesus, we connect them to this possibility by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who is connected to this vision from this city and our global family it's important for you to know why we exist and it's important to know, help you know what we are about let me run it quickly in one minute number one to help actualize the global harvest of souls the mission of souls the global harvest of souls it is it is a global mission that we must not ignore hallelujah that we together with other members of the body we are about the genuine salvation of souls number two to equip and build believers unto maturity unto stature through the revelation of god's word the only way believers can grow and attain maturity is through the accurate exegesis the communication of doctrine Doctrine is the course curriculum that builds believers. It brings maturity and it brings stability. Number three, God has also helped and anointed and ordained us to be instruments of completion and balance. The body of Christ for a very long time has suffered different shades of imbalances that have delved into error by well-meaning people. And so the Lord has raised us graciously and uniquely granted us access into superior dimensions of the counsel of God to the end that we be instruments that with the attitude of love and humility bring the body of Christ to a greater sense of completion and balance. Number four, to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles, signs and wonders, bringing healings, deliverances and transformation to men you have to understand this so it shouldn't be a thing of surprise when you see the demonstration of the spirit of the lord in all kinds of supernatural manifestations you have to understand that it is part of the grace and the equipping that we have received it doesn't have to be a miracle service anywhere we are gathered that grace speaks and it answers even now are we together Number five, to help strengthen the unity of the body of Christ. As you know, I have said it again and again that I am sent to the body of Christ and as a ministry, even though 
organizationally speaking we may be a ministry or I, I don't know how we'd look at it but then our assignment please keep that scripture there to send to bring unity to the body of Christ there is such a state in the spirit called the unity of faith the Bible says until we attain that point the unity of faith and finally to become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and please correct that that is national transformation national transformation media you'd want to just correct that national transformation any listen the bible says we are the light of the world the salt of the earth that means the the benefit of our spiritual encounters must not only help us spiritually but it must be translated into a context that blesses society the church is a blessing and an advantage to society it is an advantage to civilization so if a businessman or a politician a governor or a president or whoever if you sit under this grace it shouldn't just be that it is only your spiritual life that is growing your intelligence as far as leadership and governance must also be affected are we together i believe in the power of influence and god has so honored us with great men and women of influence captains of industry politicians i owe you a duty under god to see that in addition to your spiritual growth you are equipped with the tools by the spirit reference from scripture that can help us to bring the kind of leadership that can transform society neither do men light a lamp it says and to put it under a bushel but you put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all those who are in the room that means there were people in the room even when there was darkness confused waiting for whoever is the light hallelujah this is very important we are about this week in week out all of our arms of expression all of the platforms in the ministry work in synergy to the end that this six point vision be achieved if for any reason and by any means we deviate from this then we're wasting our time the grace and the backing of god remains for as long as we are committed to this unified task the bible says write the vision it mandates to make it plain so that he will run that reads it are we together over the next few weeks i am going to be having very powerful and special teachings uh, and these teachings will be along the areas of all the graces that god has so graciously allowed to be at work in my life and in this ministry it is important for you to understand the graces that god has so invested in this ministry so that you can become a partaker but you see grace is administered through knowledge so there must be a, an accurate exegesis of the scriptural basis for the reception of these graces it is not just by mere impartation impartation will be fruitless if there is no understanding that supports it it first starts with water before it turns to wine it doesn't start with wine it is first water then it turns to wine are we together and i'm excited about the things that we're going to be learning i am a student of the wisdom of others i am a student of uncommon men and women who have been used by god across the earth over the years some dead some alive and so we are not inventors of these truths it will be arrogant to invent something at this level and and attempt to communicate it to such an intelligent people the things that we teach are not opinions the things that we teach have been tested they have been vetted by the integrity of god proven in the lives of those who have gone ahead of us to the end that we have the certainty of those things that we have believed luke chapter 4 please verse 1 to 4 and then we'll begin our discourse for tonight luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 luke chapter 4 
Luke chapter 1. Please forgive me. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. I meant to say. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Please look up. Please go back to verse 1. The Bible says for every body of believers, there are certain spiritual truths that are called most surely believed. Every truth should be believed, but according to the measure of grace and the dimension of the investment of the Spirit given, there are certain truths that the average person in this ministry should have as a settled conviction. Can you imagine someone still doubting the reality of healing in a healing ministry? Can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the blessing of the Lord under the ministry of Kenneth Copeland? Can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the power of faith under the ministry of someone like Papa Hagin or our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedipo? You, it, it, it's an anomaly. So there are things called the truths that are most surely believed. We are reading to verse 4. Verse 2 please. Even as they delivered them to us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Please celebrate Reverend Akila and his dear wife. <laughs> Blessings to you and good to see you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Verse 3. It says, it seemed good to me also. Here is an apostle saying, it is possible for a man to have perfect understanding. You can have perfect, accurate understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order, most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. Please let read in concert. One, to read. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. That you no longer believe it just because you like the man of God teaching it. But you catch the revelation of that truth yourself. There are many people who believe truths not because they have gotten the revelation. They like and they trust the communications of that truth. As well-meaning as that is, it's not sufficient to produce results in your life. Remember what the woman at the well said. Come see a man. She invited them. They came on her invitation. But when they encountered Jesus, they told her, they said, we believe, not because you brought us. We have tasted of this thing for ourselves. And like a chef preparing a meal to ensure that there is balance, there is growth, there is stature. Life applicable truths that are, say amen. amen. So tonight we are discussing the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 may the lord transform our lives mightily and marvelously so saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive this was the praise of the four and twenty elders jesus did not die for them they were speaking on our behalf to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Seven spiritual realities that were purchased for us in redemption. And one of them is wisdom. One of them is wisdom. The Bible tells us, that wisdom is not just a psychological attribute there is a, a manifestation of the holy spirit that the holy spirit can find expression in the life of a man and a people as wisdom isaiah 11 and verse 12 verse 1 to put it in context there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse he says and a branch shall grow out of his roots then he begins to list what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold manifestation. Because it is one and the same spirit. You read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says all of this diversity of operations are done by one 
and the same spirit and so he gives us a list of the sevenfold manifestation of the holy spirit number one the spirit of the lord talks of authority and dominion number two the spirit of wisdom and understanding number three the spirit of counsel and might then number four the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord but now we are discussing the spirit of wisdom in ephesians chapter one paul was mentoring the church in ephesus part of his apostolic ministry let's go to verse 17 in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 paul began to pray and here was the content of his prayer that the god of our lord jesus christ even the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so immediately we see that the spirit of wisdom is given it is not something that that dimension of wisdom is not something you learn it's not something you fish out from the earth it is given are we together write this down please there is a manifestation of the holy spirit upon the life of a believer as the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit can manifest in the life of a believer as the spirit storm is the secret behind the exploits of men in this kingdom wisdom the secret behind the exploits of men in deuteronomy was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him as a result of that wisdom the children of israel hearkened unto him the same way they did to moses that means they did not just listen to moses because he was called moses there was this manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that reflected itself in uncommon leadership the same spirit came upon joshua psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 we're learning tonight it says thou through thy commandments had made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me we're reading to 100 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation last verse it says i understand more than the ancient because i keep thy precepts there is such a state where a man can access a level of spiritual intelligence and wisdom that is above and beyond that which this realm affords show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest psalms 104 and verse 24 i'm showing you from scripture that the wonder working power of god's wisdom in the life of a believer is the principal secret behind exploits in this kingdom please read with me it's projected ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy works uh-huh in wisdom thou hast made them all in wisdom thou hast made these manifold things in wisdom you have produced this uncommon level of results hallelujah it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes more than a sincere heart to excel in life it takes more than a godly conscience to excel in life there are many well-meaning people who love jesus christ with all their heart born again but it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes god's dimension of wisdom to bring about exploits it takes god's dimension of wisdom generally any kind of wisdom brings you in a position of advantage above the normal human being you'll be learning that there are different kinds of wisdom but i tell you from the authority of scripture any then god's dimension of wisdom will grant you access to results that defy common sense results that defy logic 
This is the realm God has called us into. Hallelujah. Are we together? So it takes wisdom. Every time you see the exploits of an individual in ministry, exploits in business, exploits in governance, any kind and any dimension of exploits, I submit to you by the authority of the word of God that behind every command, every uncommon result is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. If you're with me, say amen. The absence of the spirit of wisdom is costly it leaves you to the frailty of your intelligence it leaves you to the frailty of your perceptions the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is one of the systems of advantage that was given to the saints to help us manifest the fullness of the life and the power of God the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 this is why God gave us all these great blessings he says um verse 10 really not nine three to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of god there is a display of wisdom that god desires for creation to see What then is wisdom? Please write this down. Those following online, following from whatever TV station, just make sure that you have your note or you have something to just write or pen down this information. They are valuable. The Bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. What is wisdom? I'll first give you the dictionary definition of wisdom and then we'll explore our definition based on scripture. The dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience, the quality of having knowledge, and the quality of having good judgment. It also refers to the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and sound judgment the dictionary also says that wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have to make good decisions and sound judgment James chapter 3 please before I give you the kingdom definition of wisdom which is an addition to this that we already have james chapter 3 and verse 13. the bible lets us know that there are principally four kinds of wisdom there are four kinds of wisdom that the bible identifies now um maybe psychology or some sort of some field of philosophy may come up with different angles but we are teaching and the reference of our teaching and spiritual communication is scripture are we together now so this is by no means an attempt to to downplay the intelligence of those who are authorities in the area of philosophy but you need to understand that the basis of our communication is scripture and so every truth that we bring is derived from the authority of scripture it says who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom right 14 it says but if ye have bitter envies and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth verse 15 it says there is this wisdom that descended not this wisdom descended not from above so there is a wisdom that does not come from above but is earthly number one that is the first kind of wisdom that the bible officially identifies there is earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom i'll explain that in a moment number three there is devilish wisdom 
there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish wisdom next verse and then it says for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work 17 but then the last kind of wisdom the bible says is the wisdom that is from above there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish or demoniacal wisdom and then there is wisdom that comes from above please write this down what is earthly wisdom earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom what you call common sense the the inherent ability to recognize right or wrong earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom common sense that sense of intuitiveness the ability to recognize right or wrong instinctively that is natural wisdom or earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom this has to do with your faculties of perception this is scientific wisdom this is philosophical wisdom wisdom that has come through studies wisdom that has come through experiments this is the second level of wisdom it's called sensual wisdom scientific philosophical wisdom that comes through studies wisdom that comes through experiments and then number three we have devilish or demonic wisdom what is that a sense of superior judgment that is outsourced from your fraternity with demon spirits there can be a sense of superior judgment a sense of judgment that is higher than the natural man's own but does that it was outsourced through your fraternity with demon spirits the kind of wisdom that comes through your alliance your fraternity and your covenant with demon spirits and then the bible tells us finally that we have the manifestation of wisdom that comes from above what is that godly wisdom supernatural wisdom the wisdom that comes as an impartation by the spirit of wisdom godly wisdom supernatural wisdom is god helping us let's define wisdom now from a kingdom perspective please write this down number one wisdom is defined as the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge now that you know these things happy are you if you do them the accurate application of knowledge or information number two wisdom is the supernatural ability listen carefully the supernatural ability to use the written or inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and provide solutions to life's problems i will take it again just be patient the supernatural ability to use the written both the written and inspired word of god to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems this is called wisdom it is a supernatural ability the faculty the fortitude the ability to take advantage of the truths found in the written word and the inspired word that comes through the spirit that it helps you to make accurate decisions and then by it you provide supernatural solutions to life's problems this is called wisdom wisdom is related to advancement wisdom is related to wealth wisdom is related to exploits this is very important the bible lets us know that a man can be alive and yet lack wisdom 
that means the same way a doctor can diagnose a patient and say you have deficiency of calcium you are alive you are not dead you are still alive but there is deficiency of calcium deficiency of magnesium and that component is in a drug or some kind of treatment given to you and as you swallow those pills you are taking into your system the magnesium or the calcium that you do not have it can come in form of food it can come in form of a pill but whilst you take it you are aware that the calcium that i lack i'm now taking it in and usually they would give you a few indices that can help you know that that which you did not have has now arrived listen carefully you can actually look at your life as a report card and you can know whether or not there is the presence of wisdom and if you find out that there is the absence of wisdom the bible also leaves us with a strategy to transport wisdom from wherever it is into your life now this is powerful but you have to admit that men can lack wisdom james chapter 1 and verse 5 we'll go back we'll go back to that scripture but just to let you know from scripture it says if any of you lack wisdom just stop there forget about what you do later on but that there is a possibility that a man can walk on earth a man of god can lack wisdom a businessman can lack wisdom a politician can lack wisdom it has nothing to do with being good or bad the same way a car as wonderful as that car is it can lack fuel when the car does not have the gas that moves it forward it remains at that position everyone say wisdom so wisdom is the supernatural ability to take advantage of the truth from God's word both written and inspired and they now guide you to make excellent decisions in life and by the principles you are able to come up with supernatural solutions that attend to the needs first your need and then the need of those around you that any man who is able to attain this state is considered from scripture to carry the spirit of wisdom may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we understand that as a result of redemption one of the sevenfold prophetic reality the blessings that have been given to the saints in christ one of them is wisdom and that more than just a gift of wisdom more than just the word of wisdom there is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom how to access wisdom We're on a journey right now like spiritual archaeologists. Let us find where this wisdom is. Seeing that the presence of wisdom is the secret to an excelling life, an excelling ministry, an excelling family, an excelling business, even an excelling spiritual life. It then means that anyone who is serious with God and serious with destiny must search for this wisdom wherever it is and that when you find it because the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing we're getting there shortly it says in all you're getting get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her look at wisdom speaking to you he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early those who love me they will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom lack of wisdom is costly especially in a world that we live in today follow me please to the book of job job 28 be patient and i'd like you to carry the determination of an archaeologist as we study this scripture we are searching for wisdom we want to find it and so desperately open our hearts to embrace it are you ready surely mm, 
job is speaking now how many of you know that there is a dimension of wisdom that comes through pain when you suffer beyond the threshold there is an impartation the haziness that foolishness brings can be eroded through the presence of pain this man at this time he's lost everything his reputation whatever it is sometimes you just need to lose all these things the prodigal son provided he had supplies his wisdom began to diminish until he got to a point where he was feeding with the swine the bible never said the holy ghost spoke to him the bible said he came to himself look the kind of wisdom that came out of that pain surely there is a vein for the silver and there is a place for gold where it is found is that true do we agree with this statement of course there are gold mines there are silver mines it says iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone uh-huh he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfections the stones of darkness the shadows of death next verse please it says the flood breaketh out from the inhabitants you know and they are dried up they are gone away from men it's a long reading just be patient it says as for the earth out of it cometh bread good information for you you're searching for where bread is the bible tells you it's not in a bakery bread is found from the earth that means there is something you can do to the earth to command and force your portion out of it let me tell you what this means this is not where i'm teaching i just thought it was a point i should not let to just pass like that this earth is not just talking of the ground it's also talking of men that the secret to your bread is men so when god wants to give you bread he brings you to encounter men next verse verse six and the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold there is a path which no fowl know it you know how high the fowl can fly but it says there is a path which no fowl know it and the vultures eye hath not seen the lion's whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lion passed by it remember what we are looking for we are looking for the location of wisdom he put it forth his hand upon the rock he overturned the mountains by the roots uh-huh he cut it out rivers from among rocks and his eyes see it every precious thing keep reading he binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden he brings forth to light verse 12 it says but where shall wisdom be found so look 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 the look the 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 artistry of job he begins by showing us where some of the things we admire on earth he says their location has been found we don't have a problem looking for where gold is where silver is where iron is men have used advanced technology to excavate rocks to find minerals but there is a particular spiritual resource we are still looking for and job said where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding hmm our journey begins it says man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living that means cbn does not have it that means our institutions do not have this kind of wisdom it already gives you a clue that as you begin this archaeological journey let me tell you where not to waste your time expo it is not found in the land of the living there is a kind that is found in the land of the living but not this one next verse the depth saith it is not in me find other minerals but not this one the sea do you know what is hidden in the sea abundance in the earth hides in the sea the bible says but this wisdom the sea says among the resources that were hidden there this one is not part of them The Bible says it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of offer and the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And you are not looking for it. 
it says and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls it says for the price of wisdom is above rubies the toppers of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold we're still looking for wisdom whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding hallelujah seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and it is kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of its fame come on look at the testifiers of the exploits of wisdom that destruction and and death came to hold a mic and give a testimony that as we go around destroying people we have heard of this wisdom the fame we have heard of it that anyone who possesses this can beat us hands down we have heard of the fame thereof here is your answer god understand it the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof so after confusing us and leading us from pillar to post he now tells us that listen there is no archangel that holds this wisdom that god only god knows the way of wisdom and he is the exclusive custodian of this priceless commodity the wisdom that comes from above the wisdom that comes from above please pay attention i have seen people who carry in bodily form the spirit of wisdom i have seen people manifest natural wisdom i have seen people manifest scientific and philosophical wisdom with the various degrees of results that support the kind of wisdom they carry i have also seen people access demonic wisdom but i have seen a few people and i'm glad that this happened in my lifetime people who access superior levels of wisdom many years ago as the lord was preparing me for ministry i listened to pat robertson the founder of 700 club cbn and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he prayed for three things he said lord give me wisdom number two give me favor number three give me the anointing of the holy ghost i wrote it down quickly and i prayed the same prayer too i said lord I don't trust this my head i don't trust what i know give me wisdom number two give me favor and number three give me the anointing of the holy spirit and then the holy ghost spoke to me he said follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the proof of passion is pursuit and i began that journey aware of the the many shades of ignorance and lack of wisdom in my life i admitted the fact that if this kind of wisdom cannot be found it automatically or just because you have answered the call of god you have it automatically i don't mean to insult your pedigree but i present to you a the all surpassing excellence of this wisdom can be felt pray and say father let me encounter the spirit of wisdom tonight give me an encounter this wisdom can only be found in god only be found in god for the way of the lord the lord I'm tired of my current results oh god for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of i want to show you you see everything that comes from god even though it is a gift it has conditions in the cheapest and the greatest gift in as much as it is a gift 
Romans chapter 8 from verse 10 from verse 8 down to 12 tells us that there is a condition in fact many conditions at a personal level the condition is that you believe with your heart confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and then you are saved he says for with the heart man um, confesses with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation is that true and then when you go down to I think verse 15 it begins to say even this man you see how shall they go to verse 14 please it says how shall they call on him whom they have not believed so believing is the key to calling on him and how shall they believe if they have not heard hearing is the key to believing and how shall they hear without a preacher so a preacher is the key to hearing not just the word of god a preacher is the key to hearing i am the voice he is the word but i am the voice that cries and then next verse says how shall they preach except they be sent so you are sent to preach you preach they hear they hear they believe they believe they call upon god they call upon him they receive salvation this is how it works according to scripture mm. are we blessed there are conditions to access the spirit of wisdom number one now please look up let me just teach you something before we delve into this Character of scripture to hide spiritual possibilities in the life and the stories of men are we together now that means every time you begin to search for a dimension of spiritual reality your first element for instance is to understand the blessing of the lord and god's idea of what it means to be blessed in this kingdom then you go to isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2 that is the biblical recommendation it says to look unto abraham verse 2 your father and to sarah that bore you for i call him alone and blessed him and increased him that means to understand my idea of a blessed man understudy abraham if you want to understudy the ministry of prayer the bible takes you in james chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18 it now brings you to this personality called elijah he says elijah was a man of like passion so you use the person elijah to understand the power of prevailing prayer are we together now if you seek encounters and you want to understand the protocol to a spiritual encounter the bible tells us that the personality the go-to personality is this man called jacob in chapter 28 of genesis chapter 32 of genesis then chapter 24 of psalms this is the generation of them that seek thee they, that seek thy face O jacob king james says but the original translation says O god of jacob so god recommends the encounter of jacob as the protocol for finding him are, are we learning now yes you don't blindly begin to search for truths just like that they are personified if you are learning favor you want to see the power of god's deliverance that god is able to deliver men the nation of israel from egypt is the classic expression of deliverance so you understudy what did they do number one they were in captivity how did god help them he brought a man trained that man are we together now by signs and wonders he brought them out through his mouth his mighty hands the things that are written aforetime the bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so now we are discussing wisdom it is only wise and obvious that we re make reference to the personality that was identified from scripture as the wisest man second only to jesus christ is that true so we are going to understudy the life of solomon the man that the bible says is the wisest man because once upon a time he did not have the manifestation of wisdom so what happened first kings chapter three she lacks kapranda katuski adabakata verse three 
the first condition to access the spirit of wisdom please do not miss this is that you must have passionate love for god and for his program passionate love not just love passionate love for god the spirit of wisdom comes not just upon prayer warriors but genuine lovers of god not users of god not church goers not just bible study giants but lovers of god no eye has seen no ear has heard the bible says neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that god has in store for them that love him but he has revealed it to them by his spirit so the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is a love affair as we learn from this reference solomon read with me please verse 3 one to read and solomon loved the lord hold on he never said and solomon wanted wisdom he didn't say solomon wanted fame he didn't say solomon wanted a name solomon loved the lord notice the two people that are references of wisdom the bible starts by telling us of their love life for god so loved the world he gave his son as proof of love solomon now also loved it's interesting that true wisdom starts with love and solomon loved the lord walking in the statutes of david his father is that true only he sacrificed born incense in high places and then the second condition very quickly if you want to access wisdom you must have a sincere desire please keep that scripture there number one passionate love for god and his agenda number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing the spirit of wisdom cannot come on an individual who is not committed to being a blessing because wisdom manifests itself in supernatural solutions that bless all and sundry so there must be a passion and a determination in your heart you want the spirit of wisdom to come and elevate you in business in ministry in politics in every area of your life you must have a passion to be a blessing let's read verse um we're going to begin to read from verse 8 and 9 we'll come back but then let's just look at it verse 8 and 9 now in fact let's just start from verse 4 down to 9 media help us it says the king went to gibeon and to sacrifice there for that was the great high place and the bible says a thousand bond offerings did solomon offer upon that altar uh -huh. next verse in gibeon the lord appeared to solomon in a dream by night and said ask what i will give thee this ladies and gentlemen was the ultimate test of selflessness and a desire to be a blessing it is not an angel saying you should ask it is the god of the bible who has everything perhaps if i was the one who was asked that i would say god get a notebook you don't know where i'm coming from get a notebook hmm. the lord said ask what i shall give thee verse 6 and solomon said hallelujah look at the expression of selflessness the determination to be a blessing thou hast showed unto thy servant david my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day uh-huh so he's talking about rulership and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of my father david and i am but a little child ah this man knows what to do with god there is there is a language that when you use with god eh, you are ready to receive something from him i am but a child i know not how to go out or how to come in because it is wisdom that gives direction he's saying i am void of wisdom and i admit it there's no need spending my life experimenting and returning back in pain then verse 8 
and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people he said that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude verse 9 here was his request give therefore thy servant an understanding heart what for to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this this so great thy people notice he did not he keep that scripture there please he didn't ask for himself my brothers and sisters i've had a few encounters with the lord and i can tell you this there are kairos moments where when you have an opportunity that's when the flesh will say you better say it quickly speed promotion all kinds of things the life of my enemies and god was listening to the lord the, the solomon and solomon said lord i desire an understanding heart what we call wisdom and the reason why i need it is because of my passion to be an effective leader my passion to be a blessing can i tell you this everything that god gives you flows through you but should not stop with you if it stops with you even though he gave you it will kill you listen to what i am telling you everything god gives you provided it came from god it flows through you and you will benefit from it but ultimately it must move past you if god gives you an anointing if god gives you wealth if god gives you influence if he gives you increase if he gives you intelligence a platform whatever it is when he sends a word to jacob his intent is that it gets to israel are we learning so you must have a desire to be a blessing please say after me in the name of jesus shout it if you can't say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be passionate about being a blessing i look beyond myself hmm now this is a very strange language especially in this our world today the world of i me myself to hell with whatever happens to anybody provided i am enjoying you will never access the spirit of wisdom ladies and gentlemen Ilonia, uh -huh, to what end myself so that i'll have on common insight into the world to what end myself the moment the language is self you will not come out. there are people who seek all kinds of spiritual virtues not just wisdom alone they seek the anointing they fast and they pray but the corruption that is behind that they just want it to come let us make mortar let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a is about jesus christ enthroned that everything that flows through you flows to become a blessing blessing me for the sake of your people and god says okay i see that you are a faithful treasurer you want me to trust you with the wealth of the kingdom yes lord you will benefit disappointed me let me find you and he will trust you with dimensions of grace that you may not have known that to exist the third key to access the third condition to access the spirit of wisdom is found in first kings chapter 3 and verse 4 It's called the law of sacrifice solomon offered a thousand bond offerings sacrifice here does not just talk about finances alone there has to be total surrender in this case he offered offerings but there are levels of sacrifice where you are the offering you provide the fire i'll provide the sacrifice listen there are times that god is not looking for what comes from you you are the sacrifice he's looking for you want to receive an investment a rich investment of the spirit of wisdom you must become that sacrifice 
the bible says i beseech thee brethren by the message of the lord that ye offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service there are people who bring money and they give god and he says carry your money away what i'm looking for is your heart do you know why because you see the kind of results you command when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you god must have your heart if not it will destroy you the pride that comes from the excellency of that result is the reason why many people do not last as god begins to lift them i'll be showing you the benefits of this spirit i am telling you when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you men will almost worship you because of the kind of result that comes from your life but if you have become that sacrifice you're on the altar and everything that comes through your life only becomes for his glory you can't scam God and play politics with him and say, Lord, just grant me the spirit. Don't worry, I'll return back. He says, no. I have watched men for decades. I know the vulnerability and the tendencies in their hearts. The power of the spirit of wisdom is so, I'm telling you, in one month, one month, your life can so change, your ministry can so change, your business can so change, you will marvel and wonder at what you become. And so before he invests that dimension of grace on you he now tells you sacrifice solomon offered please look look with me imagine imagine that this entire altar is full of bulls and you are cutting them one by one and heaven is watching one thousand please keep that scripture there verse four one thousand for some of you you think 1000 is not much go and try to buy one ram right now with the current economic situation a healthy well-built ram one i don't know how much they sell but you go and try to buy it or one cow even if someone pushes it down it will stand up oh boy you will still be angry that you paid so much and they're pushing that cow down and here is a man who just watched this and said let's start with 100 and he killed 100 and then he killed 200 and i can imagine the angel saying what is going on here 300 400 and he says no it's not enough add some more i want to show him how much i love him and god is saying it's not about the cows who is doing something to something that is so close to what my son is going to be doing this guy is about to give everything 800 cows or rams 850 900 950 and he still said let's add some more and he said angel stay back you don't need to go i will go myself this kind of sacrifice can i tell you this there are sacrifices both financial and otherwise that are representations of your passion and seriousness with god when you commit yourself to those levels of deep sacrifices you open yourself for encounters do you know there is a level of sacrifice that automatically becomes a covenant psalm 50 verse 5 give it to us please let me show you from scripture it is it's not a covenant that you enter willfully it says gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me how there is a level of passion and hunger god sees you giving so much for the kingdom and he says you are doing this for me god sees you promoting the kingdom in ways that you are going out of your way like a madman there was something solomon understood and the bible says that night not the next day god came to him and said you are calling me solomon said did i call you he says your sacrifice There are many of you your heart you have not given anything in your life that has touched the heart of god to really command his presence this is not coercion in any way to inconvenience you but it's the truth can i tell you this behind the uncommon people you see god using world over today there is a dimension of sacrifice hmm. you know most times when people see god using an individual marvelously people begin to think it's just luck 
or you are lucky or you were fortunate to just find someone who laid hands on you my brothers and my sisters behind every story of genuine lasting exploit is blood dripping on the altar a testament of sacrifice you want to access the spirit of wisdom god must vet you until you die the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your reputation the sacrifice of your ego the sacrifice of your resources the sacrifice of your intelligence if it is the wisdom that comes from above you are looking for you have to get to that point where you say lord take everything ask anybody you admire ask anybody who manifests on common dimensions of results there is a sacrifice component as the condition that brought either the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit are we together anoint my everything use my everything i release my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything all of me lord you have my everything you have my everything use my everything i release my everything take my everything say take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord sacrifice listen you know you have given all when there is nothing left again abraham take thy son thy only son whom thou lovest take your reputation the only one that you spent 30 years building take it to a mountain take your resources the one that you pride on Oh, it is by my strength that I'm a millionaire. By my strength, I'm a billionaire. Look what my intelligence has given me. And God says, if it's business you want to do with me, let me show you how we do business in this kingdom. I do not come to people who are strong. When my strength finds strength, it goes back. It waits until you are empty. Let me tell you this. There's nothing wrong with confession. But there is a mistake we keep making in the body of Christ. There are times, respectfully speaking, not to mock or spite it, but this blind claiming that we claim everything just like that. No. There are positive confessions, but there are foolish claims that never lead to any results. There is a real price. Not everything is a gift. There are things that are rewards. And if we do not balance this, we will continue to mock ourselves, jumping up and down, and never be able to command results. You want the spirit of wisdom lavishly at work in your life? Sacrifice. So that God can call you today. Listen, God can call you and say, help them please. He says, you are a billionaire, but I want you to leave that meeting. Come. And you say, yes sir after all i was dead before they even knew me hear me man of god if you want the spirit of wisdom to come upon you to command exploits in ministry it's more than a bible school it's more than just hands being laid on you death sacrifice there is nothing in my life today i tell you sincerely by the god of heaven there is nothing in my life today that i cannot give god nothing and be careful don't say that because god will vet you 
God take everything. He says, thank you. He knows what to touch. It's easy to give Ishmael. You can say Ishmael, leave. But he says, it's not Ishmael I want. Take Isaac. Isaac is a symbol of your future. Isaac is a symbol of your reputation. Isaac is a symbol, the epicenter of your self-worth. Take it to a mountain. If it's power you want in this kingdom, if it's an investment of the spirit you want, this one is not something you claim this one is a cup you drink and a baptism you are baptized into you want the spirit of wisdom to be at work in you the grace that subdues systems and structures dominion at a level and a frequency that confounds principalities and powers this one comes from above I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord. Watch this. This was when the king, the king slept, forgot his dream. Can you imagine how kings thought those days? You forget your dream, you slept by yourself on your bed, forgot your dream, and you are going to kill everybody because you are angry. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty? That means the manifestation of wisdom takes time. Beware of hasty decisions. True wisdom allows the spirit of God to rest upon you. There is a time component to manifesting wisdom. God gives speed, but he's not hasty. He says, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known unto Daniel. Verse 16. Then Daniel went in, listen, and desired of the king that he should give him what? So when you need wisdom, you need time. Time that comes through meditation. The outworkings of wisdom. Just give me time and I'll bring you a supernatural solution. Even though the spirit of wisdom is upon me, he does not walk carelessly. He walks with time. And that time is spent in meditation. Now watch this. He said that he should give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Uh huh. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah, his companions. Verse 18. That they would desire mercies of God, the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his followers should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. Read with me. Then the secret was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. You see how the spirit of wisdom works? Meditation. The sacrifice of meditation. Do you know that there are many non-Christian sects that understand this principle? They would stay for a long time with a clean sheet. Find out some of the top CEOs of conglomerates around the world. They just sit down. Sometimes they go on a vacation. You think they are swimming around and you see them sitting under a tree or somewhere just taking the cool breeze and they are just meditating and sitting quietly. And then one idea comes from heaven that, that defines the next 10 years. The spirit of wisdom walks through the sacrifice of meditation. I cannot begin to tell you ideas things that have come by the spirit of wisdom as i sat down sometimes in the night where everywhere is silent and i just sit down i'm just playing worship like this and i'm quiet do you know the bible says be still and you will know there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still lord 
I don't know how I'm going to do ministry. I don't know how to go about this. But I give you praise. I remember I say some of these things to encourage us. It's really no secret. I remember when God was preparing us to start the work here. One night I, w I just sat down and I was just praying. And then I kept quiet for more than 30 minutes. And there his voice came, the spirit of wisdom. The Lord made me to buy the map of Abuja. Just a map of Abuja, Nigeria, Africa, and the entire globe. And I bought all of them. And he said I should lay my hands and begin to pray and speak over it and speak over the territory. Divine strategies by the spirit of wisdom. And with that childlike behavior, you ask the forces over this territory what happened. A territory does not just open because you have something to say. There are controlling powers. But one manifestation of the spirit of wisdom can help to keep them where they belong. This is not in an arrogant sense. Some of you did not inquire from the spirit of wisdom. You went alone to start business. You had capital and all you did was to open a shop. Don't feel bad. That's why you are here. And you just gathered goods and sat down there. And he said, no. Do you not know? Let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom comes. It comes largely through scripture. You are sitting down wondering, why is my business not growing? For instance, Lord, why is this not? Write all the problems and then keep them before the Lord. Writing down the problems is proof that you expect an answer. Lord, I will wait. Speak to me. And one by one, his voice will start coming. How am I going to raise 1 billion, 10 billion for this project? And all that I have in my account, home and abroad, is 500,000. And the Holy Ghost comes with the spirit of wisdom. You don't need 10 billion. You only need men. Because money hides in men. So, don't think you cannot start the project because of money relationships are cheaper go and start learning how to build relationships the spirit of wisdom are you getting what i'm saying now and you get up and say okay lord what do i do and he says here's the deal i will grant you favor and i will connect you with gatekeepers start from there and the next thing you enter your office and a ceo that you have no business knowing and you remember that was my deal and because you have mastered relationships you understand the law of honor good afternoon sir and the spirit of god rides through your understanding and makes the man to say who are you you're a young man you look visionary what do you do he says sir well we thank god i'm, I'm still putting plans together see me tomorrow a connection has begun that will let her birth you to become a billionaire when people ask you and you say i don't know you are right but you are wrong don't tell them you don't know it's a manifestation of the spirit of wisdom one thing connecting to the other someone can sit down and your life is not moving forward and you sit down meditating lord there has to be a way no matter how long there is a way and i trust you this is why i am here suddenly the spirit of wisdom comes breathes upon you james chapter 2 and verse 26 let me tell you why you have been failing there is no spirit component to what you are doing a body without a spirit is dead your shop is only a body there is no spirit back in it your political career is only a body there is no spirit back in it Oh dear politician, your intelligence is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. So when you introduce the spirit component to anything you are doing, you now give it life. Wisdom has come to you. The sacrifice of meditation. Number two. How do you access the spirit of wisdom? Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. Let's look at Amplify. The ways that you access the spirit of wisdom, listen carefully, is as you open your mouth to speak by faith, it says, I will give you a mouth and such utterance and wisdom that all of your foes combined will be unable to stand or refute. 
there are many times you have to go by faith you are in the boardroom and now you are about to speak and wisdom works like word of knowledge you at the point you do not even know what to say yet but by faith and in the name of Jesus believing you have the investment of that spirit you open your mouth and you begin to communicate things that later on you will have to listen to what you said yourself because you know you are not the one speaking this is how many people got jobs they went by faith because the spirit of wisdom was there and they had all kinds of executives sitting there and they were standing there though shaking like a leaf they believed they were not alone young man what do you intend to do for this company and the person does not know what to say and suddenly here he comes and boldness and you begin to speak and articulate with such level of uncanny intelligence this is what i seek to bring this is what i seek to bring and they look at you and say where have you been when you go out of that place you can't even remember what you said open your mouth and i will feel it are you learning something when you open up your mouth matthew chapter 10 please from verse 19 and 20 when you speak and you make decisions you give room for the spirit of wisdom to come up it says but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak verse 20 it says for it is not ye that speak hallelujah but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you i was in bonny bonny island a few maybe a month or two ago and i had a wonderful tour you know they just showed us the oldest cathedral and when they were talking about one i think it was uh, bishop joseph johnson now i think i hope i got that right and there was a pulpit there and uh, the people who were helping us with the tour were just explaining something that happened the guy prepared his notes and he was going to preach and i think something i don't know what it is that happened and maybe he lost his notes or something and he stood there he was shaking he did not know what to say and fire just came and the spirit of wisdom and revelation came upon that man and he began to speak that was how his first message came can I tell you, there are times you have to close your eyes by faith and just say something. You will find out that it did not come out as foolish as you thought it would be. Because the Holy Spirit edited it before it came out. Number three. How does the outworking of the spirit of wisdom how does it work creative thinking write it down innovative and creative thinking job chapter 32 and verse 8 this is the young man ellie who's speaking job 32 here's what he had to say but there is a spirit in a man or a man and the inspiration everyone please say inspiration creative thinking is powerful this is not about businessmen this is how the mind works the mind was designed to birth supernatural possibilities the moment you drop it in that atmosphere where there is an incubation of destiny altering ideas innovations creative thinking you're a leader here you're a captain of industry find time where you just move away from people and be alone and begin to think allow the holy spirit brood over your mind that's what it means to think creatively in the name of jesus christ what is the next step to this church what is the next step to this company what is the next step to preserving the purposes of god as committed to me and ideas begin to come from your spirit and then one of the ways that god brings draws out this manifestation of wisdom within us is through dreams and visions hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 please when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you do not downplay the power of dreams and visions god who at sundry times and in diverse manners listen carefully he spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets 
by the prophets so he used the prophetic he used dreams and visions i think it's um what's the scripture that says i have used similitudes i have multiplied visions similitudes you can go to bed and suddenly find yourself and the holy spirit is revealing this to you like he did to daniel in chapter 2 and verse 19 then the secret was revealed unto daniel was it not joseph that went to bed and had a dream and his whole destiny played before him i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars many of us lose touch we lose the opportunity to release the spirit of wisdom because when we get up with prophetic dreams and visions and encounters we do not document them let me tell you this every time you wake up and you find out that god gave you a dream that you know is prophetic you see the way dreams and visions we have a series on that the way dreams and visions work is you can see part one of that vision in 2017 and keep it the part two will come in 2022 and then you now join it and it makes sense if you do not respect the first part you will not see the second part dreams and vision seldom come complete they come in part because we see in part but you must respect the parts that god has shown you okay god told you you are getting into ministry but he did not tell you the kind of ministry he did not tell you the location he did not tell you the dimension respect the one you have seen so far write it down and start praying over it then another part will come god told you you are going to become a great politician you are going to lead nations you're going to lead territories he didn't tell you in what capacity respect the part he gave you and put it down he says write the vision write the vision before you write the vision you must receive the vision when you receive the vision your next assignment is to write it down are we blessed very very important dreams and visions now proverbs chapter 24 from verse 3 and 4 we're looking at the excellency as we prepare to pray now the excellency of possessing or walking in partnership with the spirit of wisdom number one it says true wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established please give us verse 3 in amplified amplified it says true skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation anything is built by wisdom once it has to do with building whether physically emotionally spiritually financially anything that needs to be built the architect is wisdom you cannot ignore wisdom and expect to build anything that lasts you want to build a ministry that lasts you want to build a business that lasts you want to build a kingdom influence that lasts it will come through the platform of divine wisdom now for study let's just look at one scripture first Kings chapter 3 now we'll look at verse 15 then we'll start from 16 down to 28 that will be our last scripture and then we'll pray now watch this so all that was happening was a dream by the time we get to 15 solomon woke up my god spiritual things are so powerful imagine if you were solomon's friend and both of you slept on the same bed you would not know that something of destiny value he would just wake up and stretch himself except that he's not the same person who went to bed and solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to jerusalem watch this and stood before the ark of the covenant of the lord and offered up bond offerings what a man he offered bond offerings for the dream to come when he woke up he offered bond offerings for it to still begin to manifest he made a feast to all his servants next verse verse 16 
now this will be the first test of the presence of this dimension of wisdom there's a lesson to learn here and we round up you can know that the spirit of wisdom has come upon you in solomon's case is about to be tested there came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him this is a difficult situation right now and the one woman said oh my lord i and this woman dwell in one house and i was delivered of a child with her in the house uh-huh and it came to pass the third day after i was delivered that this woman was delivered also and we were together there was no stranger with us in the house terrible because there is no witness now so this is a complicated case there's no witness save the two of us in the house 19 and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it that means she laid on the child till the child died are you following this difficult puzzle now and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me huh? while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom are you following the story now and when i arose in the morning to give my child suck behold it was dead but when i considered it in the morning behold it was not my son which did bear 22. the other woman said nay but the living is my son and the dead is thy son and this said no but the dead is thy son and the living is my son and they spoke before the king hmm. can you imagine such a situation two women come to you and they say one my child is dead the other now the king is about to demonstrate the all surpassing excellence of this encounter he's about to know and test for real whether this grace had truly come then said the king the one saith, this is my son that liveth and thy son is the dead and the other said nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living the spirit of wisdom keep the scripture there let me teach you something to learn are you seeing that the king was in a situation right now that it was a dilemma he was not in the room with them and there was no witness there was nobody to call only two women and their two sons now they are in a very serious argument whatever the king did at that point would go around the nation he could lose his reputation at that point what do you then do there are times when the situation that stands before you defies what you know it would defy what you studied it would defy the physical connection at that time you will need to outsource the spirit of wisdom notice the character of the spirit of wisdom until the word of the lord came there was no way of discerning but remember that the word of the lord which is also this sword of the spirit is quick and powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword it is able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit and this sword that is the word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the man immediately solomon stood he said i am confused there has to be a yastic bring me the word the moment he carried the word the spirit of wisdom was ready to walk they brought that sword it was the sword of the spirit which is the word of god watch this that means you walk best in wisdom when you stay with the word of god the word of god reveals to you how god thinks and having the mind of christ enhances the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom this is very powerful bring me a sword and they brought the sword before the king now the word of god started testing them watch this the first test to know the real owner watch this now the first test was the test of love and the test of selflessness because all men have self and whoever is the owner of the child 
must love the child more than their self greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friend so he said we are going to divide the child in two we will give half to you and half to the other in other words we are going to destroy this vision we are going to destroy this a child yet does not just talk of a human being it can mean anything destroy this vision into half give one to the other give one to this verse 26 watch this then speak the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son are you seeing compassion and love the moment the word of the lord came into the equation the love test the self test it says oh my love please i love this vision more than my reputation let my reputation die but let the vision live and the king was looking said now we are knowing the real owner the word of god is fine is filtering this i love this son do not allow this son die that I, it took me a long time to have this son and i love him more than my reputation don't worry give the woman the most important thing is let the child live let the vision live the word of god the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and in no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine or thine so the real issue was not about the child the real issue was about bitterness it was about envy it was about anger that i am not succeeding so kill this person's child too so that two of us can now not have a child 27 watch this and learn and the king answered and said now that i've used the passion test now that i've used the love test now that i've used the self test this is the real owner she is the mother thereof 28 the bible says and all israel this is the thing about wisdom all israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom was of god was in him to do judgment what did they see so wisdom can be seen when the wisdom of god rests upon your life you are not the only one who will know you have it everybody around you will know because of the excellence of the judgment that you have are you ready to pray we have about five minutes or so and we are going to pray passionately listen brothers and sisters every destiny here is at the mercy of the manifestation of this spirit upon it I'd, I'd like you to make sure your heart is open for the next five minutes because you are going to cry many of us are at points right now in our lives our ministries different areas of our lives and the cure to break that stagnancy is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom the cure to foolishness foolish decisions recycling of pain wisdom lift your voice and begin to thank the lord for the word that you've heard tonight there is such a thing as the spirit of wisdom someone is praying all the overflows following online please pray the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom are you praying thank you father for your word tonight Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of wisdom upon my life, upon my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Admit that you need wisdom higher than that which you have seen at work in your life. It is only those who hunger and thirst that are filled. I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Father, I declare my need. I declare my need for wisdom that comes from above an impartation of this wisdom by the holy spirit i need it to walk in my destiny to walk in my relationships to walk in ministry to walk in governance in leadership oh. if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god if any man lack results let him ask of god are you hallelujah hallelujah 
believe me when i tell you there is a relation when one accesses this level of wisdom there is no limit to how far your results can go you see the thing about wisdom is just when you think you have exhausted a level another layer of that wisdom is opened it is ever increasing glory by the wisdom of to see the manifestation of the wisdom of god providing supernatural solutions lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray the wisdom of God, the wisdom that comes from above, that is We are going to pray. I told you the spirit of God works, the spirit of wisdom works best upon and with a man who sustains the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ means that you have adopted his value systems as revealed from scripture. You must, listen, you must be a student of scripture so that the Holy Spirit can find the tools that he will use to reveal the wisdom of God to you let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 which was also in christ jesus permit this mind to be in you you must replace your thinking with the word of god believe me when i tell you that everything around your life will revolve around your belief system the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters there are many perspectives but the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters you are going to pray lord a passion for the word not only to study it but to have it in me not only to study it but to have it in me to become a living epistle when satan came to jesus the fountain of wisdom he replied by saying it is written even though the holy ghost was upon him but what came out was it is written there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you blessed there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you rise there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and connect you to strange relationships there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you to greater levels of the anointing of influence of power there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you increase in your organization hallelujah praise the name of the lord hallelujah amen and amen now if, if you allow me to do this since I'm, I'm not here alone i'm glad and honored that apostle goodart is here i i didn't inform him but i, I hope you're not embarrassed sir. i would want to plead with him even if it's just for a minute to just come and now that there is such an anointing here i'm going to ask him to come i'm also going to plead that reverend akila come he would just speak in one minute just declaring the word of god and the power of god's wisdom to rest upon you and then reverend akila will declare and apostle goodhart will declare and i'll just round up will that be fine please let's honor the lord as the servants of god come up very quickly praise the name of the lord these are veterans of the gospel and reverend akila is going to speak over your life just receive these are men that have been helped by God in various capacities and we trust the workings of God upon their lives and they're going to be making declarations. Reverend Akila will just speak over your life and Apostle Goodheart is going to make that declaration and then we'll just wrap up. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you for this moment we share in your holy presence. Thank you for the word that has gone forth that will not return back void. May there be now a performance of your counsel which we have received tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray God grants you enlargement to receive more of his blessings more of his word in the name of jesus 
by this declaration we speak forth every red sea standing in front of you let it now split in the name of jesus by the power of god we command you to walk through dry land to arrive in your promised land in the name of jesus every divine equipment it takes to bring to pass the performance of the counsel of god on your life receive in the name of jesus by the workings of his great spirit we bring your way the very resources that it takes to fulfill all his counsel for your life in the name of jesus by reason of the combined anointing in this place now we pray may your heavens remain perpetually open may angels ascend and descend on your matter in the name of jesus our father and our god it takes only one encounter to change the life of any man we believe that by the instrumentality of your word tonight your sons and daughters in this arena and the multitudes across the nations have had a definite encounter to bring about a change in our lives father thank you for divine suddenlies from the first day of august in the year 2021 we decree and declare the change has come upon your people in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As your hand came upon one Elijah and guaranteed divine acceleration, guaranteed divine impetus, guaranteed divine speed, and gave such a one divine advantage. By your hand that has come by the release of your word, we decree and declare divine advantage upon this house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your mercy, let the remaining five months of this year be the best of this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that the sound of jubilation, the sound of celebration, the sound of rejoicing, will abide abound in our homes in the name of the lord jesus christ by the power of the speakings of your blood we decree and declare no occasion for tears no occasion for sorrow no occasion for fears in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody clap those hands. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now just standing still under this anointing, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, according to the measure of grace, the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that the Lord has so lavishly brought upon this ministry, I decree even as we have received from those who have gone ahead of us in the name that is above all names receive from tonight the spirit of wisdom receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom let it begin to manifest as extraordinary results in your life the grace to make quality superior decisions that move you forward receive that grace in the name of jesus by this impartation every mountain and every obstacle that stands before you in the name that is above all names we declare it shattered right now because you have believed i declare that you will begin to see it happen now That everyone around you will know for a shorty that you encountered the spirit of wisdom tonight. Hear me. 
in your place of prayer as you meditate many of you the holy ghost will come to you like a mighty rushing wind he will show you the secrets of your destiny he will reveal to you the strategies and the blueprint for the next level of your life in the name of jesus and i declare that under the influence of the spirit of wisdom may 10 years be put in one month under the influence of the spirit of wisdom may 10 years be put in one month that by the end of august many of you would have made tremendous destiny advancements in the name of jesus christ oh may your ears hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it and that you find rest by it for your souls in the name of jesus christ the lord will give you a wisdom he will give you a mouthpiece that no one can gain say nor resist in the name of jesus christ in your place of work your homes your ministries may men say what wisdom is this in the name of jesus christ the mighty works that accompany the spirit of wisdom may they begin to happen in your life from tonight and the rewards that follow wisdom in the name that is above all names may those rewards come upon you and overtake you in the name of jesus christ father we agree as a family of faith and we agree as the body of christ over this city over this nation over this continent that in a fresh dimension let there be an outpouring and a manifestation of the manifold wisdom of god according to ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent that now let it be revealed by the church to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of god lord this wisdom will be revealed in politics and governance and leadership and finances and relationships and career in the name of jesus christ every aspect of the believer's life will begin to excel on account of this baptism with the spirit of wisdom receive it now in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's honor and celebrate the servants of god thank you sir thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my hands thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my hands. The greatest wisdom that a man can show is to run to the fountain of wisdom himself. The Bible says, Thou art the fountain of wisdom. It says, In thy light we see light. Anyone who is not led by the fountain of wisdom is still in darkness. There are people here following online and there are people scattered within this auditorium and all the auditoriums down to the basement. Some of you may be saying, Apostle, I have heard you speak and I know that I need an encounter with Jesus, the fountain of wisdom. Or there are some of you who are saying, I love Jesus with all my heart, but as it is right now, I need to rededicate my life, my ways to him. You may have come from far and near let's minimize movement i'm about to make the altar call wherever you are we have just a minute or two for you i'd like you to run and just come and stand here as we celebrate the lord for your life it is because of you the lord put this meeting do not wait for someone to come win that war tonight are there people coming celebrate them as they come celebrate them as they come anyone listen don't sit back and say um I, I think I am all right. The moment, listen, the moment Jesus is not Lord of your life, you cannot access wisdom. Celebrate them as they come. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Run to Jesus, who is the fountain of wisdom. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. The first wisdom is to receive the free gift of his life.
translating you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son if you're still coming come quickly if you're still coming come quickly young and older like come to jesus for as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away the bible says all the overflows just stand in front of your screen for time and those following you who is following in your home your office your living room i like you to be prepared to pray this prayer also i salute every one of you for coming to jesus he never sends people away that you have come to him is proof that you are not a rebel rebels don't come to jesus they run away from him hallelujah lift your right hand every one of you standing in front and i like you to say this prayer after me you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me lord jesus if you're joining them please quickly come say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i declare that you are and you remain my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit they have come to the fountain of wisdom jesus himself i decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of jesus from tonight the lord gives you a new beginning and i decree and declare that you are recipients of the life of god you are part of the family of faith and from today i declare that you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you for making this wonderful decision now there are counselors waving the placard there i'd like you to please just follow them and there'll be a few people who will just talk to you koinonia please celebrate them celebrate every one of them the little one someone just help them make sure that there's someone watching over them praise the name of the lord hallelujah now please i i intended announcing this before I, I don't know how i forgot um from today we'll make it a point of duty the first the first koinonia service of every month uh, i know that we always fast but the first koinonia service of every month by the grace of god automatically will be waiting upon the lord praise the name of the lord this is for our spiritual health is is part of the training process to help us build capacity praise the name of the lord so um because we didn't do that today we'll do it next week next week you fast you can break anything from one two because of time i know that is usually a tedious time those who can stretch it into the evening why not the reason why we fast is because the bible recommends it to help us to access the spirit of revelation It's part of the spiritual training process praise the name of the lord hallelujah and then do well to make sure that you do not come alone bring in as many people who need an encounter with jesus the son of the living god the lord bless you the testimonies from your life will show in jesus name after the grace please do well to just greet one another on your way out and i want you to watch your steps so that you don't enjoy yourselves have you been blessed tonight let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen god bless you and see you on sunday dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it 
see you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.